Howdy folks, it's me, Manic Moore, coming to you from the Bunker System, located underneath the Artville. I found somewhere in the jungles of the Midwest. And today I'm coming to you right, right on the heels of one record day with another record day. I went out today because I had, you know, I had a day to myself again, which I won't um, anyway, but I got a, a giant pile of records. Uh, I'm going to start off with, I just thought maybe the batteries of the Tiki Drummer were dead. And it's still possible that the batteries that have been in the refrigerator, that's where I keep them for about five years, aren't any good anymore. But he's apparently he's apparently dead. I'm not sure. I need to, I need to take these. There's my ibuprofen. I wondered what the hell I did with them. I needed those last week. Oh boy, okay. I gotta remember to take those up. Now get right to the records. Well, first I gotta start with the story for today. So I'm in Half Price Books, which is where I got most of the records just two days ago, but I missed my exit. I drove right back. It's like two freeways coming together. It's like, eh. I missed it. I drove right by it, so I'm like, oh, what the hell? I'll go back there, because I, where I have to turn around is right anyway. So I'm there, and, and they hadn't really put out any new stock, but they'd moved records that had been in the high-priced, half-priced section to the 50-cent price lower at the so I, I was able to get some records that I have been you know been looking at but I'm not gonna pay for it right so that's cool anyway there's this guy I'm down I'm on this one of those little red stools with the wheels on it because they've got the record the 50 cent records in a really awkward you know and I'm there and this guy comes and I'm get, I'm getting close to the end like there's a stack of records and a stack of records and I'm going this way, and this guy in a tie-dyed sweatshirt and a floppy ear hat. The hat was cool. This comes up and stands right next to me. Uncomfortably close. But it's cool, right? And he bumps me a couple times, excuse, and he says, excuse me, excuse me. Yeah, you're uncomfortably close. What do you expect is going to happen? So he gets done with the first act. And I'm kind of getting closer to him because I'm kind of running out of room the way I'm going. And he reaches over my head into the next stack. I had to stop. I had to stop and I just sat there and I looked at him for three minutes while he paid no attention to me and went through this effing stack. He finishes it and he starts to reach over to the stack on my other shoulder. I said, hey. And he stopped for a moment. I said, are you done? He goes, i got to go to this stack. And I said, I'll move over. And so then he goes around. But he went through the hole. He could have just come back. Oh, man. Let's go right to the records. Nancy in London was marked down. Nancy Sinatra in London was marked down. I was happy to get that. Moving with Nancy was marked down to 50 cents. Don't have that one. That was fun to find. Another budget country album... A tribute album to Hank Williams by Slim Filton. Slim Filton sings Hank Williams. That should be weird. Who's Lenny Welch? I don't know. It was 50 cents. I picked it up. A soundtrack album, Madam X. That was marked down to 50 cents. Picked that up. Henry Mancini, another madcap 60s comedy that if you're my age, you'll remember seeing it as a kid, The Great Race. I did not know that Henry Mancini did. Well, of course, why as a kid would you pay attention to that? There's no reason to pay attention to that as a kid. Madcap. And who's Joe and Eddie? Joe and Eddie in concert. And Joe and Eddie over here, volume four. Joe and Eddie. Esquivel, Infinity, and Sound. 50 cents. Picked it up. And you know, I didn't start out to collect Ramsey Lewis, but it just so happens that I probably have his, his whole catalog just from this half price books. They moved all these down, plus the ones I bought, you know, a while back that I showed you. And these are ones I don't have. Ramsey Lewis Trio, Barefoot Sunday Blues, Dancing in the Street with Ramsey Lewis on Cadet. It's a gatefold. Ramsey Lewis. Ramsey Lewis Maiden Voyage. That's Ramsey on piano keys. Big giant piano keys. And they're in, in an interesting snapshot of Ramsey at dinner with Jean Duchon. 
This just happened to be in the 50 cent bin. They didn't mark it down as far as I can tell. Switched on Bacharach. Performed on the Mood Synthesizer by Christopher Scott. That may even feature something off of that. I don't know. There's so many records. This is a great cover. The Sound of Christmas. It's a compilation album, but look at that. I think that's a cornet convertible. Dodge cornet, I think. That's just an awesome cover. That's why I picked it up. I have this album, but I realized, you know, I was feeling guilty for buying multiple copies of albums, but on a number of occasions I've got it home and realized that the copy that I have is, say, the mono copy and the copy that I found is stereo. And I know most people, collectors, collect the mono because maybe that's the first one out. I don't know, but I like the stereo version of a record. So I picked up this Vincent Bell. And Vincent Bell only made, he preferred to be a studio mu musician, but he made a few solo albums, two or three. I've got this one, I've got another one of his. But he invented invented stuff, like electronic stuff, including the watery guitar sound that you hear a lot in the 60s. He invented that, and this is kind of a funky 60s album of his. The Bone! These records coming up are a dollar. Chris Montez. I do not know who he is, but he's surrounded by s girls wearing 60s haircuts and clothing. <sighs> you said that! It's a recording. We can play it back if we want to hear it again. Ray Conniff. Ooh, you bought a Ray Conniff album? And look, that looks like a later one. Yes, yeah, 1973. Well, that's a pretty spiffy cover for 73. That looks like an 80s cover, frankly. Anyway, I picked it up because he does a cover of Ben. Remember Ben? If not, search my catalog. I sing it. You'll love it. Ben, the Michael Jackson uh, from the movie, The Rat That Eats People, Ben. Anyway, um, that's on here. That's why I picked it up. Oh, another Ramsey Lewis album. This came from St. Vincent de Paul and not the Half Price Books. Go in Hollywood from Russia with Love. I thought it would be interesting to hear how he does that tune. You all know I have this one. It's one of his best albums, Henry Mancini. I don't know if I've got the mono version. I might have the stereo version. This is stereo. I might have the mono version. I probably have more than one copy. Teresa, I bought this for trading material, I believe. I'm not sure. I'll listen to it and see what, what's up. David Rose, David Rose, Melodies by Jerome Kern. It was just an interesting cover. Don't know what to expect out of it, but I like the cover. Top 10 hits, broke down about another budget. Uh, album featuring did I say this is going to be a long video and then just because three records for a dollar some 80s stuff I can't even pronounce the damn name who is this it's from France this is from France it's from France it's a nice cover Roxy Music Manifesto I don't know it's clean the best of the art of noise there you go the best of 68. It's a two record set by Terry Baxter. And I know you're all out there laughing, but as insipid and lame as this easy listening music is, generally speaking, every now and then something slips through the cracks that he has recorded. That's crazy. And this has the good and the bad and the ugly on it. And it's arranged by Frank Hunter, who arranged White Goddess. Did. And, 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 the exotic, the, one of the best exotic albums ever. He arranged that. I didn't know that. He arranged a number of tunes on this, apparently. How fabulous. Porcel, you've seen me hold, 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 hold up Frank, Frank Porcel album, Beautiful Obsession. He's a French composer, arranger, and it's easy listening, but there's always, not always, most, many times, there's interesting twists, and he uses, uh, he uses in instruments, interesting and there's twists and turns in his music that make it fun. Look, I just bought this one too, but I couldn't pass it up for a dollar. It's very clean. Mr. Lucky. Mr. Lucky. Henry Mancini, that's right. I got two or three of these, these cheapo movie cover albums by the, the Film Festival Orchestra, and I've got a couple, but I don't know which one, so I picked these up anyway. The Spy Who Loved Me is on this one. Smoking the Bandit. It could be... Wacky. 
Ken Griffin, I wouldn't generally buy, I don't buy his albums, but this is a wonderful cover. See, there's a, a, a model on a cloud, and that, apparently that's Ken with a rocket strapped to his back. Isn't that a funny cover? That's just a great cover. How could you pass that up? I couldn't pass that up. I'm lost in the clouds. Lost in the clouds. That's fun. Uh, Arthur Lyman album. I've got one or two or three copies of this. Now I have another one. It was a dollar. Enoch Light. Do I have this one? Can anybody tell me the records I have? It's too late now. Why bother? Okay. Movies on film. Film on film. Uh, 35 millimeter magnetic film for uh, recording audio is what he used. That's what that means. There's some good. There's some good. Um, some interesting titles on that. Anyway. Oh, uh, who the hell? This is a compilation album. Why did I buy it? The Misfits by Don Costa is on this one. Birchwood Pops doing Star Wars, The Deep, A Bridge Too Far, The Exorcist 2, The Heretic. I may already have that, but now I have another one. More movie hits by the Film Festival Orchestra. The Saucerer is on this one. MacArthur Roller Coaster. Star Wars. Ooh, the Electric Moog Orchestra does Star Wars. And another one, themes from great films. This time, Phil Krause. Phil Krause is, does percussion. He's the percussionist on this. That's interesting. I think he made, he, if I'm not mistaken, he made a really, he like an experimental percussion album I featured a while ago. Go on. Why, there was something else I wanted to talk Oh! Conducted by Richard Hyman, Heyman. Richard Heyman and Hugh Montenegro, my favorite. That's why I wanted to point that out. Sounds fantastic. Don't have this one. It's a promotional album for RCA audio equipment. So it's a compilation and they don't even, they don't even tell you what's on the inside. This is going to run so long. Contemporary Sounds of Nelson Riddle. That was just a fabulous 60s cover. There's a model and some sparkly thing. And then she's nakedy underneath it. Ha <laughs> ha! Stone Soul Picnic is on this one. Speaking of Nelson Riddle, I've got this one. Now I have another copy. This was a dollar! And it's a fun album. This is a great cover. Look at this cover. It's a woman sitting on a chair surrounded by, I thought it was a lamp, but no, they're not. They're weights, they're extra dumbbells and, and crap and whatever. And who is Madri? She's at the Allen organ. She's playing the organ. But why all the exercise equipment? I don't know. Dick Lucas. This is going to be a good one. I should feature this one. There he is on the back. There's Dick. Go on to the next one. There is one in here. Joe, but so, I can't believe that I bit, I bought this was the guy the the guy with the accordion right and and the muscle car didn't like it it was horrible went in the stack for me to go throw not throw it away but trade it away what what new pussycat he covers that and there were a number of stereo action albums there I couldn't remember I don't think I have this one chorus and percussion of Keith Textor I may have this one I think it's very good but now I have another copy. Henry Mancini, Breakfast at Tiffany's. Okay, don't have that one. That could be fun. Greatest Hits from Greatest Films. Again, another Greatest Films album. A compilation. Les Baxter, How the West Was Won. It's a Mad, Mad, Mad World, Nelson Riddle. I didn't know if he, I didn't know he did that. Frank Sinatra's on that. I've got this one, and it's an interesting album in that Edmund Ross made a number of albums, and they're all kind of like, yeah, sort of space agey, but on the two or three that I have, he sings a couple of songs, and his voice is just a tiny bit flat, and it just makes the songs that he sings are highly interesting. I have this, now I have another one. This may be cleaner, and it may be in stereo, and my other copy may be mono. But it's a rare, obscure record that when I blocked it the first time, people were like, hey, can I have the whole thing? And I'm like, no, get your own copy. Ha <laughs> ha. This was it. I'm just mean. I'm not mean. You know how many records I block? And never mind. I don't want to go into it. But just because I don't put the whole record up doesn't mean I'm trying to ruin your life. Anyway, organ magic. Look at this. Look at this photograph of this guy sitting at the organ looking outside of his 
the, the out in his backyard apparently. He does a cover of Quiet Village. There he is on the back with his pipe. Al Bolington at the Wurlitzer. I might have to feature that one. Brazen Brass, another Brazen Brass by Henry Jerome that I don't I don't have. Now I have that one. Ooh, that's got a sticker on it in a really bad spot. Sorry about that. If you want to take off the glue, use WD-40, just a little dot of it. David Rose, Strings Alive. David Rose, Strings Alive. Pickwick. It's the 50 guitars of Tommy Garrett. He's, they probably bought this from Liberty. These are all re-releases. Uh, picked it up anyway. Budget record. The Hollywood strings. It was not the night strings. It was the Hollywood Ridge strings that I liked. That's why it was all, I was all screwed up. The guitar styles of Al Kaola. Kaola, thanks, Tank. You had to tell me twice, and it finally stuck. The next time I do it, I may not get it right again, though. But this time, 1967, I think, or 62. It's so small for my aging eyes to see. This looks like fun. Burt Kempfert, Afrakan, Beat, and other favorites. This is not complete. It had a cassette tape with it. Why? I don't know. It had a collaring book in it. That's gone. And the record's probably scratched. It's a little scratchy. But it's okay to just to say no to drugs. It's okay to say no to drugs. It's a two-sided record. And what the hell is that? Somebody pasted a little picture of a bear over some type, too. Um, so I don't know. I don't know what to expect out of just say. It's okay to say no to drugs. What? I say yes to crank. And then they listen to the records, and they say no. No, back then it was heroin. No to heroin. I'm only five years old. Keep the heroin away from me. I don't know. I've got a copy of this. I have another copy. This copy could be cleaner. It's fun budget spy music. Why? I, bought, I just bought the damn thing on eBay. David Rose, Music of the Stripper, more, more, more. Stereo action. I think I've got this Leo Adio, and I don't think it's any good. But I, I wasn't sure. I don't have this one. I would have recognized this one. Guitars Unlimited, Crazy Rhythm. This looks excellent. Guitars Unlimited plus seven. That looks good. Paul, a Paul Muir, Murat album I don't have. The covers of, it's another, he's another French composer that I, uh, arranger that I like, uh, that does, that makes interesting, easy listening music, okay? And this, he, classical gas, he does that, let it be, Beatles song, that's good. The covers are kind of not very exciting, but the music can be very interesting. And this is just last on the heap. There's no rhyme or reason for any of this. Brass construction. I have no idea. It's just on the bottom. I'm not going to spend any more time. Liberty United Records. United, they... Liberty United, they... At 1979, Liberty was still making records, apparently. I play the Tiki Drummer, but the little bastard doesn't work anymore. Cut it all out. Darn it. Where's my WD-40?